Be afraid. Be very afraid. As I bring to you a review of David Kroenberg's The Fly, which is celebrating its 35th anniversary today. Big days entertainment rankings and reviews. So greetings to my fellow YouTubers and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name's Dual, better known to you as the Big D, and this time around I bring to you a review of the 1986 sci-fi psychological body horror flick, The Fly, released by Fox, along with Brooks Films, as produce, the, the producing company. The film was directed and co-written by David Cronenberg, who has directed many shocking body horror flicks. I haven't seen much of any of his. I might look into some, maybe. Just depends. Anyway, the film stars Jeff Goldblum, Gina Davis, and John Getz. The film is loosely based on the short story of the same name from 1957 and it and the original film, which came out the following year, which I haven't reviewed yet, but I've seen it, though. Now, this version tells the story of an eccentric scientist who, after one of his experiments goes wrong, slowly turns into a fly hybrid creature. So, if you're ready, let's get into this. All right. Brilliant but eccentric scientist Seth Brundle meets science journalist Veronica Quaife at uh, Meet the Press event held by Bartok Science Industries, the company funding his work. He takes her back to his warehouse home and laboratory and shows her his invention, a set of telepods that allows instantaneous teleportation between pods. Seth convinces Ronnie, as she's also called... To keep the invention secret in exchange for exclusive exclusive rights to the story, excuse me everyone, and she documents his work. Although the pods uh, can transport inanimate objects, excuse me everyone, they, they mutilate live tissue, which is demonstrated when a baboon is turned inside out during an experiment. So Seth and Ronnie begin a relationship, and concurrently, he tries to figure out the issue with his telepods. After transporting and then cooking two raw steaks, he finds out that the machine is creating a synthetic version of the object rather than the object itself. Seth is further inspired to reprogram the telepod to understand the makeup of living tissue. And he successfully teleports a second baboon. Ryan departs before they can celebrate, and Seth worries that she is rekindling her relationship with her editor, Stathis Barnes. But she has actually left to confront Stathis about a veiled threat, spurred by a jealousy of Seth to publish the telepod story without her consent. Seth teleports himself alone, unaware that a housefly has entered the transmitter pod with him. He emerges from the Receiving pods seemingly normal. Seth and Ronnie reconcile, along with sugar cravings. Seth exhibits increased strength, stamina, and sexual potency, which he believes resulted from the teleportation purifying his body. When Ronnie becomes concerned about both Seth's deteriorating sanity and the strange bristly hairs growing from a wound on his back, Seth becomes arrogant and violent, insisting that the teleportation process is beneficial and tries to force Ronnie to undergo teleportation. When she refuses, he abandons her, goes to a bar, and partakes in an arm wrestling match where he leaves his opponent with a compound fracture. He meets a woman named Tiny and brings her back to his warehouse. And they have intercourse, and Seth tries to Coerce, coerce her into teleporting. After Ronnie rescues her from the teleportation, Seth throws Ronnie out, but when his fingernails began falling off, he realizes something went wrong during his teleportation. He checks his computer's records and discovers that the telepod computer, confused by the presence of two life forms in the sending pod, fused him with a fly at the molecular genetic level. 
Seth continues to deteriorate, losing body parts along with his human appearance. After several weeks of being too scared to contact Ryan, he reconnects with her and says he is becoming a hybrid of human and insect, which he has nicknamed Brundlefly. He has also begun vomiting digestive enzymes onto his food to dissolve it and has become able to cling to walls and ceilings. He realizes he is losing his human reason and compassion driven by uncontrollable primitive impulses. Seth installs a fusion program into the telepod computer planning to dilute the fly genes in his body with human DNA. Ryan learns she is pregnant by Seth and has a nightmare of giving birth to a giant maggot. She has stated this persuaded doctor to perform an abortion in the, in the middle of the night. Having overheard their conversation, Seth abducts Ryan before the abortion can take place and begs her to carry the child to term, since it may be the last remnant of his humanity. Status breaks into Seth's lab with a shotgun, but Seth disables him using his corrosive vomit to destroy Status' hand and foot, stopping just short of vomiting acid on Status' face when Ryan screams at him to stop. Yikes. Okay, now for the ending. You know the procedure like always. Five seconds to stop, go to the description box below and fast forward to the time below. If you've seen the movie already, continue on after the five seconds are over with. Here we go. Okay, you've been warned. Seth reveals his last ditch plan to Ryan. He will use the telepods to fuse the both of them together, along with the unborn child, into a single entity to become the ultimate family. Ryan resists as Seth drags her to the telepod, tearing off his jaw in the struggle. This triggers Seth's final transformation into a monstrous insectoid human creature, shedding his decaying human flesh in the process. Seth successfully traps Ryan inside the first telepod and starts the countdown before sealing himself in the other. Seth is able to recover his, his shotgun and severs the cables connecting Ryan's telepod to the computer, allowing Ryan to escape. Seth tries to escape, but only partially breaks out as the fusion process is activated, and he is gruesomely fused with the metal door and cabling of his telepod. As Seth crawls out of the receiving pod, he silently begs Ryan to end his suffering, and she tearfully fires the shotgun at his head, blowing him to pieces. A distraught Ryan falls to her knees as Seth looks on, horrified but relieved that Seth's suffering is finally over. End of story. Yeah. So what did I think of The Fly? Well, I've got to say, I do recall seeing it a long time ago, but I can't seem to recall, but I think I've seen it a long time ago. Well, of course you might know that recently, it was, I think, earlier this year or last year, no, wait, it was last year, I think, I, I got this from the Game Exchange. This, of course, is the 20th anniversary release from 2006, which Fox put out. I know there are other better physical media copies, well, physical media, well, copies of this, and, well, from other companies, you know, I think. But anyway, this has two discs, and it contains lots of special features. Haven't watched them all. I've watched a few of them, though. Anyway, this film is so freaky. Gross out, but killer, though. Anyway, now I like the performances from the cast. We have J Jeff Goldblum as Seth, Gina Davis as Veronica, and John Getz as Stathis. The rest of the cast isn't too bad either. Well, supporting cast. You also get a special appearance by David Cronenberg himself as a gynecologist. Anyway, the film went on to become a big success for Fox and went on to be 
to make $60 million at the box office, becoming the largest commercial success of Cronenberg's career. Now, let's see. I'm trying to... Oh, yes. Um, and also, the, the, the team-up of Chris Wallace and Stephen... The purest, I, I'm, I apologize if I mispronounced the name. Well, did the makeup effect, and actually, they won an Academy Award for Best Makeup. The only Oscar won by a film directed by Mr. Kreinberg. And I agree that the makeup effects are really something. And trust me, the, the sages of the Brundle Fly is really something. So anyway, the music in this is pretty epic and intense in ways too. Done by Howard Shore. This is a pretty good. He does a pretty good score for this, and I like it. Anyway, now of course we know that the original 1958 Fly had two sequels. Well, Cronenberg has said that the stories in his films have definitive beginnings and endings, and he has never considered making a sequel to one of his own films, although others have made sequels to Cronenberg films such as Scanners, which I haven't seen, but I've heard of it, though. In 1989, Chris Wallace would direct a, a sequel to this. Of course, he was the man behind the makeup and creature effects for, of both the films, as I've already mentioned, and even the original Gremlins it is a continuation to this and focuses on Veronica giving birth to Brundle's mutant son before dying and focuses on the Bartok company's attempts to get the telepods working again. But Cronenberg was not involved in the process. Anyway, and nobody appeared, not even... Gina Davis, somebody else played Veronica in that movie. If I ever watch it someday, if I encounter it somewhere, I'll try and review it someday. I might review the original. Can't guarantee you reviews of the other one follow up to the original, but we'll see. But with some real freaky moments in my movies, some pretty good sci fi and. All that jazz, plus a great cast with Jeff Goldblum, Gina Davis, and a great score by Howard Shore, and great makeup effects for the title character of, well, maybe not title character, for the Brundle Fly. The question is, would I recommend the fly from 1986? Hell yeah. This is something that you got to see. I really do like this movie. It's pretty awesome. I mean, sure, some of its gross-out moments can be a little freaky, but overall, The Fly is definitely a film worth looking into. So, what are your thoughts on The Fly from 1986? Please tell me in the comment section below. If you like this video, click the like button below, subscribe to my channel, and be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next time when I bring to you the first of the many follow-ups to... One of my favorite cheerleading flicks, Bring It On, I'll be, as I'll start with Bring It On again. Thank you for watching, and if you like this, you may want to check out some of these other great horror flicks, or some with a sci-fi feel, maybe. In the upper left-hand corner is my review of another film that Fox put out. That, of course, was Alien from 1979. Or go to the upper right-hand corner for my review of its follow-up, Aliens, which was released the same year this was. And it came out just a few weeks before this even came out. Or, or if you just want to check out something else that's not really sci-fi or horror, go to the bottom left-hand corner and see my recent spoiler-free review of the new film done by what is now 20th Century Studios in the form of Free Guy. And the bottom right hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.